a little bit of other storage. This is about the third arrangement I've done, and this is actually two different shelving units I just joined together. Um, but I have my battery and uh, electronics here on the left. And that's just a cheap Walmart battery. Uh, I have some automotive stuff I carry next to it, and the rest of everything back here is pretty much uh, food and kitchen type stuff. One of the things you got to do is cook on the road, or you're or you're going to be spending a lot of money on eating out all the time. Right, right. And I'm I'm kind of a hobby cook, anyways. I have fun with it, so um, I try. I, I tend to buy a lot of basic ingredients and then just throw it together. Um, I've got a uh, I've got a few different stoves too. Uh, right now, I'm using the uh, little Coleman butane stove just because of the size and the convenience of the minivan. Uh, if I get to a larger vehicle, I'll probably go back to propane again. Like I've been doing in the past, but. So this is just uh, two by twos and uh, a one by four and storage you've built. Yeah, and uh, Any, yeah. nearly anyone could do this. Oh, very simple. And uh, you know, I put the lips on them and I use baskets so everything stays in. I've had some you know emergency stops a few times and rough roads obviously, and nothing ever goes anywhere. Uh, so it works works real well. And uh, the nice thing with it is I can access it from the front or back. So generally, if the weather's nice, I'll cook outside, and I can just set my table up next to the van and grab everything to cook. But if the weather is not nice, or if I'm on the road in a Walmart or something, I can also access everything from inside. So it works out real well for, for uh, being versatile. Getting it in, inside and outside is really good. That was, uh, I had it along the one wall, the bottom cabinet is the kitchen along one wall at first. But trying to get to everything when I was outside, if I wanted to cook out, was on my hands and knees trying to find things and bring them out. And I always right. forget something the first time. So well, that was, uh, this is working out real well. That is a really good system. And I bet you haven't got uh, $20, $20 worth of materials there. No, my, the bottom section my son actually built for, helped me build, the two of us built it, out of uh, scraps that he had around the house. And oh, so wow. That, that so was that free. was free. And this top part was, uh, I built two cabinets at one point in one of my intermediate builds here. And yeah, probably $20 or $30 at, at, at tops. For, and that includes the screws and everything, which I have leftovers. And even if someone, you know, didn't really know how to do this, I mean, there's got to be a neighbor who could do this basic carpentry. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty simple. And I, I didn't make any effort of being fancy or anything. I just wanted solid. And, right. and it's, it's, this particular thing's been riding around here for months now, and it's, it's holding up just fine. So. Right. Yeah, light, cheap, and simple. That's, you can't beat that. Okay, let's uh, talking about setting up table outside. I see you actually have a table set up outside. Yeah, this is a, um, just an inexpensive uh, thirty dollar, maybe thirty dollar table from, I got from Walmart, and uh, I actually got this back on camera. And I had to find something that would fold down flat and fit in the trunk underneath the other things. And this was just the right size. Let the legs extend, and uh, it was. This was one of those. Sometimes the little things make a big difference. And this is one of those game changers for me when I was in the car, having a table I could set up outside to cook on and store, put food on and stuff, where I was supposed to use a box in the trunk like I'd been doing before. Yeah, I'm, I love an outside table. Set up an outside kitchen, so you have your stove going there now. Yeah, this is, uh, so this is just the, you know, this little stove I picked up for like 18 bucks at Walmart. Um, uses the little canisters. These are, you know, they run about three bucks a piece for the canisters. So if you use it a lot, I mean, it is going to get to be potentially more than like on propane. But, you know, this will last me, I use one or two a week, depending on how much I cook. So, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And the, the convenience of this stove with a minivan is just works out for me because it, it uh, just a nice size and everything is easy to use. So. Yeah, no, you a lot of people love butane just simply for their advantage. The the instant start. Yeah, this has the instant start on it, and it's it's got nice temperature control, so I can simmer stuff. When I don't understand why no one else can master that <laughs> except the people who make butane stoves. Yeah, yeah, that's. And I mean, it's not a big deal to light it. it it's it's not. It's just this is this stove is as close as I've come to cooking on a normal stove at home. Right. It's just you just turn it on and and it comes you on. Don't have to think about it. No matches. No lighter. No nothing. Yeah, I don't understand that. They're and they always work. Even the cheapest one of those things, uh, the the piazza, I think that's what they call that. Yeah, yeah. It always works, and and yet I've never had one on any almost anything else that consistently would yeah, work. Yeah, I don't. That, that, that's I didn't. I was actually skeptical about that part of it. Right. And, but it's worked real reliably since I've had it a few months now. But, and most know. people find they work for years. I mean, they just keep working. Yeah. I don't. I've never understood that. <laughs> yeah, I, 
always, I may go back, you know, if I get a bigger vehicle, I may go back to propane because it's, you know, cheaper in the long run. Better if you get a bulk, but I just don't have the room to carry a bulk tank Right, here, no, so. you sure don't. I mean, I could, but it's just cutting into something else, so. Right, you don't have hardly any room at all. So, so for now, this is a good deal, so. Yeah. All right, so you uh, you have a, do it have an outside kitchen when you when the weather's good and cooperates you have you can cook inside if you absolutely have to yeah, yeah. so you're pretty well set there all right let's go ahead and go on inside okay. so uh, now we're inside and you're sitting on your bed and this is a, a also a home-built bed uh, this one's actually a cot now I started well, that's with right. a home-built bed and uh, I just threw it together from scraps I had and it was starting to fail and uh, I took it out at the same time that another nomad friend was rearranging her van and getting rid of this cot so she passed it on to me and it's worked out real well so far so and comfortable sometimes they're not all that comfortable yeah, i found it to be fairly comfortable i do have a couple inches of memory foam on here that i already had on the other bed so i just threw those on top and uh then i have an extra blanket here that i shove in the sleeping bag on really cold nights and, and uh but it's i find it to be fairly comfortable um, so it's probably just a walmart uh it's, cot, a, it's a coleman uh comfort smart so probably picked it up on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, they got them on Amazon. I, I think there's two different lengths, and they're like in the fifty to seventy dollar neighborhood, maybe. So they're not terribly expensive, and it's 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 an instant solution if you're looking to just instant. get started. <laughs> you can throw it in, and they're light, and you're up and going in no time. Yeah, you're that is floor. one of the reasons why you're probably getting such great gas mileage is you have no weight in here. Yeah, it's, pre it's pretty light. It's, and, uh, you know, when you you took out all the seats. And you may not be hardly any more than you were from the factory. Yeah, that, that's true. That, that's true. This probably doesn't weigh any more than the seats did. So. Right. That's probably why you're getting such great gas. Part of why you're getting a great I, I was real pleased. I'd been hoping for like 20 when I got it. And so I was real surprised to, to depending on the speed and, and quality of the gas I got, you know, like Wyoming where I spent the summer, their gas isn't quite as good. But, um, yeah, did, did 24 to 28 consistently. So. Amazing. Um, and the seats were out of it when you got it. Right. I, I got it from another uh, another fellow nomad, and he'd had it for like three years and been all over in it. And uh, he upgraded to a, uh, a SUV and passed this along to me at a steal, steal of a deal. Um, just wanted to help somebody else out like he'd been helped out, he said. And, and uh, so it served me real well. So Right. And so you would... You the, you were a minimalist in the car, and now you're still pretty much a very much a minimalist minimalist in a minivan. Would you recommend the minivan? Yeah, I like. I mean, I keep it light because I could put more stuff in here. But I like this open space. But uh, I think minivans are. I like to say if you're a single person and you're a minimalist and you just don't mind keeping it small, they're pretty good options. To I mean, a little more headroom will be nice once in a while. And a little more ground clearance would be nice on some of these rocky roads that we drive on. But other than that, I mean, it's easy to drive. It's got great stealth. When I'm if I park at Walmart, there's always two or three or four blue minivans. <laughs> it's just invisible, <laughs> and uh, and it's yeah, good gas mileage. And so I mean, it's for a lot of people. I think this could be a pretty good, pretty good setup. Right. Something real simple to get started with, and they're a lot easier to find used than than decent cargo vans. Anymore. Much easier. They're, uh, I look every once in a while just for. And it's like wow, <laughs> and you know you have to you have to get a to get a reasonably priced one. You have to go pretty old, pretty high miles, and pretty beat up. Yeah, that's I, I see stuff. You know, thirty years old that's affordable, and it's like wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty old for. So um, there's really not a whole lot to see in here. I guess the question everyone always wants to know is how do you go to the bathroom? Oh well, I, yeah. That's I mean this this is basically it, what you see here. Um, I've got a little bucket here that I use. I try to use, if I'm in town, I'll use a public restroom. And if I'm camped somewhere I can, I just go where I can dig a hole. But for those times that doesn't work, I just have a little bucket. I started with a five gallon and it was just a little bit too tall in the minivan. Yes. Um, so I got this one, I think it's a two or two and a half gallon, just from Lowe's. And uh, I use these little uh, four gallon Glad bags, again from Walmart. Mm -hmm. And they work really well. They always double bag, but there's never been a problem with leaks on them or anything. Uh, and the buckets, yeah, it's, it's a little bit low, but it, it works just fine. It's plenty steady. And uh, then I use, I, I've used both cat litter and uh, cedar shavings. Uh, but I like the cedar shavings better. Um, I got them right here. Yeah, that's right the, there. The catch is uh, they're a little bit messy. They tend to like fall everywhere. 
so you well, line like the better, so. you line the bucket with your trash bag. Yeah, I, then I, put in the cedar shavings. Yep, yeah, I'll put in two trash bags and and uh, just and I only need to use one, but that's just a, just a case. So I put them in and then I throw in some cedar shavings, do what I got to do, and then throw some more cedar shavings on top and tie it up, and it gets very little odor with it. It's yeah, that would work. Town, so it seems to work. In my experience, has been better than the cat litter I've tried. So. Yeah, and can we see the cedar shavings? Oh, sure. And again, these are just from Walmart. You can get them in the pet section. They're for like hamsters and that sort of thing. I, I want to say this bag was maybe three or four dollars. Uh, so you know, and they're compressed really tight. So as you start digging into them, they loosen up. But you can you can use it quite a few times for. Cody's you can use it quite a shot. few times. For, So that, yeah, that, uh, and then probably that bag costs you a few, few dollars and yeah, lasts it, you forever. It lasts quite a while, and, and especially where I don't use it every day, I try not to, you know, but sometimes, you know. <laughs> well, that's yeah. a question I get all the time is because, you know, these plastic bags aren't keeping the odor in. Right. It's right. coming out, but you find that the cedar shavings solve that problem? That works real well, and uh, the other thing I've done sometimes is, uh, if I'm concerned about it, I'll tie it up good in a bag, then I'll put it in a Ziploc, a quart Ziploc bag or something. And I'll you know shove it in there and zip that up and that. Um, if I and I, I've uh, the other thing I've done sometimes if I have a um, a trash bag that's getting smelly for whatever reason, uh, I always have baking soda because I do some cooking and I sprinkle some baking soda in the bag and then tie it up and put it into another bag and that helps with odor control for yeah, whatever sure. it is that's smelling food or human waste or whatever. So right, yeah, it sure would. Okay, and then the next shower, the next question everyone have is how do you shower? A uh, combination of like wet wipes or, uh, you know, just a sponge bath with water in between. And then I'll do a, a hostel or truck stop, get a shower there periodically um, as needed, as available. Right, right. So just, uh, you know, wet wipes and whatever. Yeah, just freshen up in between and then get showers when I can. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're, they're an extra treat when you get them that way. Yes, they are. <laughs> uh, here, we're in Moab, Utah right now. And... Uh, got a great one here oh, that's that's a good deal best i've seen yet yeah so what did, what was the deal here in moab oh gosh there's a hostel down there that's cheap anyways but they have showers you can go to and use and it's three dollars for a hot shower and it's not even time limited or anything you just it's kind of like a typical campground type shower nothing fancy but it works and the price you can't beat the price so, so any regrets i mean you've been doing this a couple of years and yeah. you've got a pretty good feel for what's going on um no i, I can't say i have any regrets i mean on some ways, I'd love to have done it earlier, but I had kids and I wanted to see them growing up and everything. I didn't want to be running around too much while they were still teenagers and things. Um, but uh, yeah, they're they're they've grown up, and so I took the plunge. And uh, you know, it took a little time ahead of time getting ready for uh, planning. You know, we're setting up freelance work I could do and that sort of thing. Um, would have been nice if I had the car thing figured out with a van before I left, but that's all right. It worked out fine. So um, no regrets though. So. And it wasn't very long. What was it, a year in the car and then yeah, a year in this, something like, something that. like that, yeah, roughly? Yeah, about that, so. No. So, yeah, it wasn't too bad, so. And uh, you have a YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, yeah, just Robert with them. Um, that's basically all over the internet. I'm pretty much Robert with them, so. And people can go there, and you are pretty routinely, regularly put up videos. And yeah, I try to. People basically can follow a combination you. of uh, tips and tricks I've learned as well as uh, stuff, scenes of places I'm go I've been. Right. Where I'm at, so. Right, so everyone should go, definitely go to your, your uh, YouTube channel. And uh, anything else? Any Anything we've left out? Boy, I can't think of anything else. Kind of covered it all, yeah. Yeah. Well, Robert, thanks you so much for uh, sharing your home with us and your life. It, uh, you've done a great job and really on the cheap. You have got very little money invested. Oh, yeah, very little, yeah. That's... Uh, this, people that say, I can't afford... what. Well, so what would you say to people, and people, I hear this all the time, I can't afford to be a nomad and live cheap. Can you, uh, can live on the road? Can you, is that, no. had been, has that been your experience? No, my, my last job, I was working a professional job and freelancing nights and weekends to try and make enough money to get by on. And so my quality of life has improved a whole lot by doing this. Uh, my costs are lower and this van, inexpensive, inexpensive to drive, you don't have to get fancy setting it up. I mean, it's great if you want to, but you don't have to. You can keep it really simple and still be comfortable and, and uh, live very inexpensively.
So great. So it's uh, it's a, a life that really is available to anyone that really wants it. Oh, definitely. Although you did have the skills to do something on the road. That's a that, big that plus. Helps. I mean, yeah, I haven't had to do the seasonal job thing or whatever, but yeah, you know, I could do that if I had to. But but uh, I, I like being able to freelance because I can go wherever I want. And, and uh, basically, I just got to worry if I make sure I have internet. And right. Otherwise, I'm good. So. Right. Well, Robert, thank you so much for uh, sharing your life and your home with us. It's uh, very impressive how you just done this on uh, shoestring and and really well, really happily. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's been great. It's, it's really comfortable. So. Thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate your watching, and uh, I hope you'll like us on YouTube and uh, subscribe to the channel. And we'll talk to you later. Yeah.